I started running track in middle school. At first, it was just for fun, something to do after school. But by high school, I began to appreciate the beauty of the sport, what's required both mentally and physically to succeed. The intensity, the discipline, the precision. To compete at a high level on track takes years of dedication to a single goal. There's nothing more satisfying than crossing that finish line first. But running is only satisfying and all that sacrifice is only worth it if the race is fair. In my freshman year, the night before a big race, my parents told me that a biological male who identifies as a girl would be competing in my race the next day. On the bus heading to the event, our coach also gave me the news. I didn't have much time before the race to process what this might mean, but I had plenty of time to process it afterward. And for the next few years of my high school career, as I watched again and again, first one, then two, biological males dominate girls' track events in our state. It started from what might have seemed like a fair idea. The Connecticut Athletic Association decided that males who believe they are girls can compete against girls. But beliefs don't change biology, and the result has been anything but fair. Since 2017, the two biological male runners who have competed in girls' high school track in Connecticut have won 15 women's track championship titles, titles that were held by nine different girls in 2016. Four of those state championship titles should have been mine. They've also shattered girls' track records. Those two biological males now hold 17 all-time individual women's meet records in Connecticut. As a result, the rest of us have lost over 85 opportunities to qualify for higher levels of competition, losing scholarship opportunities, titles, and wider recognition. I remember the 55-meter indoor track competition in the 2019 state championship. I finished in 7.23 seconds. That was the top time among biological girls, but third overall. The male who finished second in the race clocked in at 7.01 seconds. The new women's state champion, also a male, broke the all-time record for the event, finishing in 6.95 seconds, a time that would have earned that same runner 140th place in the men's 55-meter dash that year. It's hard to explain the feeling that no matter how talented you are, no matter how hard you train, how much you practice, how much you want to win, you've already lost before the competition even begins. Losing builds character, but only if the competition is fair. I and two of my fellow female runners, Selena and Alana, sued the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference in federal court with the help of Alliance Defending Freedom. We challenged our policy because it unfairly discriminates against us girls. Studies have shown that male athletes consistently achieve results 10 to 20% higher than comparably fit and trained women across almost all athletic events. Even when males suppress testosterone, some of men's physical advantages never go away, like greater lung capacity, larger skeletal size, and greater bone density. In 1972, Congress passed Title IX, a civil rights law that was designed, in part, to stop discrimination against girls and women and to provide them with equal athletic opportunities. But now, in the name of progress, Connecticut and other states are undoing all of that. For the first time in nearly 50 years, they are tilting the playing field against women. That's not progress, and that's not fairness. It's discrimination. When the law reflects real, biological differences between males and females, that's a good thing. When it doesn't, girls like me suffer the most harm.